Hi everyone, it's that time of the month again. And no, not what you're thinking. It's time for a garden update. Who's silly wabbit? So first up is this pot where the Kante used to be and as you know the Kante is now known as Rick Astley and it's in the Patreon spot so I need to think of what to put in here. I'll be looking at replacement and I'm taking it from one of the new plants that I got from the show. I'm also thinking of removing this Domingo since as you can see it's getting larger than the pot so I might also have to think of a replacement for that. You also notice that last time I showed you some of them got sunburns but most of them are recovering now and I'm not really concerned about the burns because they're going to outgrow them really soon. So I'm just going to keep them as is and hopefully they will get back to health in just a few weeks. Now on the other hand, as you can see this Sidum Gold Mound they have completely taken over the area and they have been smothering some of the echeverias in here. I might have to redo this part. I'll still allow them to grow, but maybe I'll just put something, one, one echeveria that's large enough somewhere here. I did mention that the gold mound is taken over. And as you can see, if I move them out of the way and part them, you would see some black prints underneath and they have severely lost color they're now turning green so i might have to do something about this right now i'm thinking that instead of black prints i will be choosing another cultivar that's already bigger in keeping with the theme of using a brown or a dark variety i'm going to pick from one of the new plants that i got because i've gotten a, quite a few with the same color The string of pearls on this side have grown quite beautifully and they are trailing all over the rocks. Same can be said on this other side, right behind the bowl. So there are some pearls trailing from the bowl and onto the rocks and from the rocks onto the ground. However, I can't say the same for this center spot. As you can see, the pearls are quite dry and I might need to do something about them. I'm not yet sure if I should replace them with healthier strands, so what I might probably do is to pull this out and put them somewhere in the shade so they would recover, and replace them with some of the ones that I've been growing in the shade now, so some of those strands are getting plump again. So a little swap would do. The Graptophyte of Supremes have taken over the area above the string of pearls, and as you can see, they have been spreading around quite a bit. They are starting to creep over into the bowl, so I might need to trim them back a bit. And if you would also have a look at the rest of them, they are starting to get quite leggy and this has been mainly due to back when I had shade cloth on top of them. They were not getting enough sun that way and there's a lot of plants in there that they have been constantly in the shade I guess. So what I'm going to do now is to chop all of them and reset them, maybe raise the mound a bit more. That way right off the bat, even as tiny cuttings, they would be receiving enough sunlight. Might even protect this spot where the dry string of pearls are because the pearls would probably need some shade, the same amount of shade that they're getting on the other sides where they are more lush. So the Graptophytum Supreme would be the key here. The scorching phase of summer is over. And because of that, the plants are growing at a faster rate again. And this is good because most of them are pushing out pops. I'll wait a few more weeks, let them grow a bit more. And that's when I, I could start thinking about selling them because I need to recover some of the expenses during the garden show. And I've spent quite a lot, so I would need to sell off quite a few plants.
This Mona Loa is a pop growing off of a tall stem. It's going quite strong and looks like it has pushed out its own flower stalk. Stockception. <laughs> the elegance around it are closed up tight. Although they have started to open now since it's getting pretty cold. And as you might have guessed, this was due to the high temperatures that we had during summer. And thankfully, that's behind us now. As you can see, the ones that are underneath the Mauna Loa are quite flat and open because they haven't been receiving enough heat and enough sun. The Senecchio serpents or the dwarf blue chalk sticks around the elegans are getting quite dense. And I also think it's a good time to trim them back now. And I might even be able to use them in other landscapes. Or I could sell them off. Either way. Now that I've removed the shade on top of them and the days are getting shorter, all of my echeverias are now starting to color up and they are shifting away from their standard green blue coloring and are now well on their way to the warmer end of the color spectrum. And yes, that tells me that autumn is finally here. You know, I'm tempted to chop and behead the others, but I think I'll leave them for now because they don't seem to be tilting or look otherwise unhealthy. I don't want to slow down the progress of their growth at the moment, so I'll be leaving them as is. Next up, I've been meaning to clean up the dried off flowers from the sedums in this mound. And while I'm at it, I might as well remove some of the flower stalks on my echeverias, especially the ones that are starting to bend and fall over. Part of me is thinking about extending it all the way to the other echeverias, the larger ones. Removing the flower stalks redirects all of the growth energy towards the main plant. What I would usually do is to pull out all of the leaves from the stalk and try to propagate from them. Then chop off the tips of the stalk. That way, it might force plantlets to grow along the stem. Maybe I'll go with that option instead. A lot of my imbricatas are pushing out more pops. It's and I believe it's in my best interest to remove them, especially now that we're heading off into winter. Because it would be a lot more humid by then, and having all of these pops in the base will just reduce airflow and lead to fungal rot. But on the other hand, I have all of these pops that I have plucked and planted a while back, and I have to deal with them first. So it looks like I have to get rid of most of them. The aeoniums have just been planted, and time will tell if they are going to settle in nicely. But I'm hoping that the short black would be filling up the place, because that's what I intend for in the design. And now it's time to look at the arc. The Graptocidum Francesco Baldi are doing really great, and as you might recall, I planted them along the rear side of the arc. They look to be settled in now, and that even includes the pups that I planted in. However, I could not say the same on this side where there has been some sunburns, so I might need to plant more to fill up the gap. The agavoides that I planted at the front of the arc are doing great. Well, most of them. As you can see, they're getting quite plump and they're starting to gain colors now, and they have already shed out their sunburnt leaves. Now, if we turn to the other side, you can see a few dehydrated ones. I just have to make sure that they are seated properly so they have a proper hold on the soil and they can get the nutrients and water. But overall, I'm not that concerned because as you can see in the middle, there are two that are looking really healthy and since they are all in the same spot, I am pretty sure that they will turn out alright. So I would need to give them a bit more time to recover. The Sidum Gold Mound at the face of the arc are doing great. They have filled up the area nicely. And as you can see, they're gaining a bit of volume and density that they're starting to cover the place really well. And clearly you can tell this is one of my more favorite ground flowers. And if we shift a bit to the left here, we see a bare patch. And it looks like they have either dried out or eroded. I'm guessing it's more of the latter because it looks like parts of the topsoil has been removed. And my main culprit here would be the birds because they tend to like digging especially when the spot isn't too filled up. So what I'm going to do is to just fill it up with more plants. And that's something I can do these days because it's no longer as hot as it was back in summer. 
And as you have seen earlier, I apparently have no shortage of this material so I could just grab a bunch of cuttings from the other side especially since I do plan to trim some of them off and I did mention that I'm going to use them in other parts of the garden this is the other part of the garden right below them is where I planted my Echeveria secunda glocca and right between the cracks of the rocks and for the most part they are doing really great as you can see they're holding their own and they have etched themselves deep into the gullies. Unfortunately, some parts aren't doing as good as this because there has been a bit of erosion in the middle and I think I would need to reinforce it again adding more soil and, add, and replanting a few more cuttings. By adding more cuttings of the glocka, this will allow them to hold the soil even more and keep the whole structure intact. I won't have a problem sourcing out more of the glockas because as you can see behind them, there's a huge stream of Echeveria glocka and I could just pick some of the offsets. Now going back to the top, you could see that behind the Sidum Gold Mound are the Sidum Blue Feather. They haven't filled out the area as much as the Gold Mound and I'm hoping that they would. Maybe I just need to give them a bit more time or I could reinforce by picking some more, a bit more cuttings from my other landscape. Also you might notice that they kind of look the same. This is not a coincidence because they are actually the same species, just different variations of it. Their actual name is Petrosidum posterianum but I've just but I've gotten used to calling them sedums so all I need to do is to add a bit more cuttings and see how they grow from there the thin line of blue chalk sticks here isn't really doing so great right now they're looking quite dehydrated but I might need to reinforce them by getting more cuttings from the other arc next up are the jelly beans behind them and as you can see they're doing really well they're growing more offsets now they're looking a lot more plump and happy than before. Some of them are getting quite tall and part of me wants to chop them but I think I'll leave them like this for now because they're towards the back anyway and they're surrounding this huge bowl. It would be nice to use them as a frame around the bowl. Oh and look, even the leaves that I just randomly spread around have grown tops. Sedum spurium or dragon's blood and the Sedum spatulfolium or cape blanco they look a bit dehydrated and burnt, understandably, because they were dormant back in summer. And now that it's getting colder, it, we're heading into their growing season, so I'm going to give them a bit of time to grow and offset, so I could use the offsets and propagate them and plant them to fill up the bare spots. But in stark contrast to these, the specimen echeverias in this spot are all really happy. And as you can see, they're putting out their nice autumn colors on. All of them are looking warm now with their pinks, oranges, and reds. And this is only going to get more intense as we go further into autumn. I could say the same for all of the Echeveras in Project Lux. They are putting out their reds, oranges, purples, and pinks. Just look at those colors, man. And now we move further to the right, to this mound. And if there's one word that I would use to describe this little arrangement here, the word I would use is crowded. The Echeveria secunda glocca are starting to fill up the gaps nicely. They have surely filled up the space around the Lila China. And as we move upwards along the stream, we, we see that there are fewer gaps now compared to before. At the very top of the bowl, I used to have this one large glocca in it, but it started to produce lots of pops and the largest rosette disappeared giving way to the pops. I was originally thinking of replacing it with another Echeveria to make a statement piece but now that I'm looking at it, I quite like it. So maybe I just need to fix the gap between the bowl and the ground. That way there's a smooth transition in the drop off. Looking at the flanks, the sedums are starting to fill up the place nicely. There's still a few bare spots but that should be manageable especially now that we're in their growing season. And further down, we see that they're even smothering some of the Graptosidum bronze. So I might need to trim them back, clean up a bit, and the cuttings could be used in other landscapes. And looking further down, it looks like the jelly beans are starting to cover the place nicely. They have grown and spread. And this even includes the ones that I just planted last month, I think. So this spot, overall, in terms of growth, it is showing the best progress. 
There's a little forest on the right composed of the pig's ears. Part of me wants to remove them just to maintain consistency with the rest of the design. But I think it mainly depends on what I decide to do in the next area, which is going to be the Patreon display area. So I'm going to keep the pig's ears in until I figured out the design. Right next to the Patreon display area would be the tulip area. Oh, hi Rick! So the very first step here involves doing a lot of cleanup. What I'm going to do is to remove all of the pots and the rocks and work on the foundation design. So I would have to think about where I would like to place each type of tulip. So far I'm thinking of grouping them by color. And maybe the more luminous or the brighter looking ones would be up in the front while the more muted or the darker ones would be at the back. I'd like to have them in, at different levels but I'm not sure how well tulips will do with mounting. So for now, especially since this is a dry run, I'm just going to have them flat on the ground, see how they go all the way through to next year, then redesign the whole thing. So there's going to be another overhaul down the line. I'll also be removing this little patch of chilies here. I'll just have to allow them to finish flowering and fruiting and maybe probably by winter once the, the top dries off or before the top dries off, I will pull them out and transfer them to somewhere else. Now let's move over to the area of neglect. There are a few pumpkin patches over here and one of them is starting to dry out. After it's done with the fruits, I'm going to remove all of these vines because they would die off in winter anyway. And now that summer is done, I've been neglecting this area less, which means that the plants are getting a bit more attention now. And except for a few sunburnt ones, they are improving greatly now. They are getting more plump, getting colors, getting larger all indicators of good health. It's been quite a while since we last had a good look at the front, so let's go do that now. Unlike summer last year, the plants are now well established that we didn't have to set up shade structures above them. They've grown pretty well and in fact they're already crowding the space and I like this crowded look. The variegated agave americana at the back is now getting bigger and since I have this planted directly in the ground I'm pretty sure you could imagine how big this could get these days it's just my mother-in-law who is working on the front garden and it looks like that she has started moving some of her edibles out in the front and that probably explains why she has been cultivating the space out in the front I was initially opposed to it in theory vegetables in the front that's so weird seems like a good idea now Of course, I have to mention the plants out in the alcove, and these are the shade tolerant plants in my collection. I've got most of them in the ground, some in pots, and I've been meaning to redo this whole space at some point. I previously had some echeverias and a bunch of other plants in there, but this space proved to be too dark for them, and they were reaching out for more light. So I guess I'll just have to work with a different set of plants here. Right now, we're just dumping all of our extra plants here, especially the, our indoor plants. Sometimes we leave them out so they would get watered and we don't have to water them manually. But yeah, I'll be working on this spot at some point. I would like to thank my Patreon supporters, that's you, Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Pui, Camille Narvaez, Gloria Ninotti, and everyone else. Thank you so much for your support. If you would like to help support me making more videos like these, you could head over to Patreon and pledge any amount that you're comfortable with. And you can do that at patreon.com slash seriescapades. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll be working on this spot next. This is the tulip spot. I would have to clean out everything first before I can work on them. It, it makes sense to me that I work on this first before the Patreon spot, despite that being the next in line. And the main reason is, if I clear out this area and move stuff around, I might need some of the soil. And this would give me a chance to redistribute the soil from the mound over there, place them here. Maybe create some raised beds for some of the supplements that I'll be including in here. Doing it that way allows me to do two things at the same time. So clearing up this area and clearing up that area. Because otherwise, if I just started there, I would not know where I would dump all of the soil. 
So now that I know what to do next, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Rick Astley. <laughs>